So okay. welcome everyone. I'm Milian from KDAP. We have uh, quite a few open source tools. Um, I'm mostly interested in uh, two of them. Heap Track and Hotspot is uh, what I've been doing. Those are profilers for Linux. One Heap Track is a memory profiler, so Heap Memory Profiler. And another one is uh, Hotspot, which is what I'm going to talk about later, is a, a UI for the Linux Perf subsystem. And uh, we also have tools like uh, Clazy, which is a LLVM-based um, static code analyzer for, especially for Qt. So it helps you, for example, to port your code from Qt 5 to Qt 6 and finds uh, little paper cuts that uh, slow down your application and whatnot. And uh, yet another pretty popular tool of ours that is also open source like the others is uh, Gamma Ray, um, a Qt visual debugger and introspection tool. All of these tools are pretty interesting, I would say, and um, I could easily uh, fill 10 minutes each, uh, but today we'll talk just about um, Hotspot. And um, the thing here is, um, this is mostly interesting for uh, Linux people, but I guess or hope uh, that there are quite a few of those in the audience. And um, historically, and if you look at how you do profiling on Linux, then um, sooner or later you will stumble over the Linux perf subsystem. So the perf record and perf report commands. And those are pretty damn hard to use on the command line. <clears throat> Just to give you a quick example, I hope you can roughly read what I have here. Um, if I go to some application that I want to profile then I used to be uh, I, I used to have to do something like perf record and then I have to remember that I actually want to do dwarf unwinding and then maybe I want to enable um, the Z standard compression uh, and then I want to run my application and um, then it did something and if I report it then all I get is this fancy or not so fancy um, standard uh, console UI that is, in my opinion, uh, not good enough. So um, I set out a few years ago to write Hotspot, which is essentially the same thing that I just showed you on the command line using the ready-made perf tools, but in a UI package built around uh, Qt5 and KD frameworks. And uh, the notable features really are is that it's much, much easier to use. And um, it tries to give you some context sensitive information, which is what I'm going to show you next. Um, and a few other things that I will not show today, like uh, actually being able to very easily um, access the um, profiling data that you recorded on an embedded target. So let's say an ARM device, Raspberry Pi, you name it. And then you copy the perf data file over to your uh, development machine, maybe different architecture there. And then you just um, connect to the sysroot and the debug symbols there and analyze everything. And that just works. So um, let's talk about some, some demo time. So as I showed you uh, before, I actually recorded some data. And instead of just saying perf report like I did uh, before, I can just use Hotspot as a drop-in uh, replacement for perf report. It will look for the perf.data file in the same uh, directory, and then it will actually look at um, what is needed to analyze the data. And now it's done. Uh, you get a little overview page, um, hopefully it looks like that. You might have seen a little progress bar earlier, and that actually was uh, me downloading debug information through debug info D, uh, which is pretty epic uh, nowadays. And then um, the first thing that you really should look at uh, is either the overview or what I do is um, the flame graph. So uh, if you haven't seen a flame graph yet, please, please educate yourself um, on this great in uh, innovation by Brandon Gregg. It is essentially a visual representation of this tabular data that you uh, probably know from uh, any profiling tool. And um, it literally just divides the full width in uh, fractions. So if you can read a thing here in this tower uh, city landscape, then it means it has a fractional large contribution to the overall um, cost. 
path as a sampling profiler, so that translates very nicely. So 66.8%, uh, which you can see in the bottom corner, is in this draw Mandelbrot um, file, pretty uh, clear. And now I can easily say I actually uh, want to colorize it by some demo, um, by the binary or whether it's in kernel space or user space. So we can see here a few red um, towers that are kernel space, but the rest is all user space here. And um, I can see what is uh, system and what is user space. And um, these are just different ways to slice and dice the data. Eventually, um, you will essentially go from top to bottom, look for a white thing that you have under your control. And in this case, it's this draw Mandelbrot one. And as you can see at the bottom in this um, timeline view, uh, all the threads that we recorded and the CPUs, and when you hover something, you actually get to see when a sample was recorded uh, that contained this frame on the stack as well. And um, OK, now it, it, let's assume I found something here, right? Draw Mandelbrot. How do I figure out where in the code that is? Um, you can right click, view color collie, and then it's yet again a different way to look at the same data. And here on the right hand side, you would have um, a list of all the uh, lines of code that actually got recorded. You can sort by inclusive cycling cost, and then you would see, okay, Mandelbrot line .cpp, uh, .cpp line 40 is apparently costly. And uh, I can double click it and open it in an editor of my choice. And I would see here is um, something that is apparently slow. A different way to look at the same data is if you go to right click and then disassembly. And this is essentially kind of like good bolt, uh, but integrated and for profiling data. So we also disassemble the data just like God bolt does, and then try to do this, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, basic building block um, colorization. And then uh, you will see the same line here that I just opened in the editor with the high inclusive uh, cost. And I can also uh, look in the raw disassembly code and find the equivalent um, costs there as needed. If you need this kind of low level um, data, it's all there now, which is uh, pretty cool. And there are some more um, improvements coming along in this um, uh, area. So I would say for the 90% use case, this is all of what I'm doing um, in my daily job as a software developer when I need to do profiling of C++ code. Um, Hotspot is trivial uh, to work. It's super fast, um, and I just do this a lot. Now, one thing, though, that um, I mean, many tools can do something like that uh, pretty easily, right? But one thing that is uh, pretty nice is um, I can also record data. So I don't even have to remember these arcane um, command line uh, tools, and I can enable um, more advanced path features. For example, the off CPU profiling, which is pretty nifty. So um, let's start uh, recording. And I get here a example application. And um, now if I try to resize this window, it's really, really slow, right? And um, well, yeah, I deliberately wrote very slow code here. Let's close the application and um, if you are interested in what um, command was run, you could even just copy and paste this out and put it in a shell script or whatever. Um, there's no magic going on here, really. Now we can uh, view the results. And again, um, some debug info D. That should be pretty quick um, because most is already cached. At least I hope so. Uh, famous last words. Yeah, OK. So now um, this is done. and. The summary in this case is actually pretty interesting because uh, we see that for some reason this application starts 210 th threads, which is pretty stupid on a um, laptop like mine, which only has eight cores. Um, similarly, on average, just 0.4 cores are running. So not a lot is happening. And down here in the timeline, you can also see that really uh, being the case, right? Um, let's jump over to the flame graph and make that more um, clear. So first of all, we have this list of CPUs. And um, there is stuff going on, but not a lot. 
And then down here, I see apparently some threads get created and then they get killed and then more threads are created and then they are killed and more and more and more and so forth. This is very, very um, bad code. Um, similarly, let's try to figure out where the code is actually sleeping. So as, the, uh, as I said in the summary page, it says on average, uh, most of the threads are just sitting around idly, not doing anything. And because I did this off CPO profi profiling, I can now select a different um, cost source for the flame graph. So by default, it shows me the on CPU cycling cost sampling based, but now I can switch to off CPU tracing costs uh, through the scheduler trace points. And then the flame graph looks totally different. And this is actually a, um, uh, a sleep time cost now. And when you look at this, um, a larger screen is useful, um, but let's have a look at what happens when I hover the timeline. I actually see um, the towers at the top um, getting um, highlighted as well. And for example, here, this thread is the so-called DBoss thread. It's, um, I can actually ignore that. Let's say exclude this thread. I'm not interested in that. Similar. Here is a um, event um, thread, which is really just this little part of the flame graph here in the middle. So again, let's say I'm not interested in that. I'm going to uh, exclude that thread as well. And then what else do we have? We have the main thread sometimes not doing anything because I simply um, didn't interact with the window that you uh, saw. So if I zoom in here, I can also say, let's exclude this whole stack whenever this uh, frame is in, um, uh, encountered. And bit by bit, I can clean up my um, flame graph that way until I eventually find the needle in the haystack, which is in this case, this left big chunk where a function that I have under my control apparently tries to lock a mutex. And again, I can just go to view caller Colli and sort by the off CPU time and find, um, so here again, it's on the right-hand side. And uh, when I sort by the off CPU time, I go to mandelbrot.cpp line 124. And indeed I double click and I instantly see the lock that is being um, held here, which is obviously pretty uh, badly placed. So let's quickly optimize this. I just reduce the size of the critical section and then I will uh, recompile. Give me a second and then I'll just re uh, quickly rerun that um, to show you the advantage here. So um, I just re-record and I resize, I close, I view the results, I wait for the cache to be filled and uh, now things look much better than before. Um, there's actually some threads being used in parallel. Uh, on average, not much because I'm actually still um, not interacting with the main window all the time, but when something is happening, so for example, in this area here, let's filter in on that. Then you can see all threads are more or less busy uh, doing something. And um, the flame graph looks nice. I can again look into um, what is now on CPU, what is off CPU, just like before, and then further look into my application, and try to come up with um, additional ways uh, to speed it up. Um, so yeah, if you have any more questions uh, around Hotspot, uh, HeapTrack, Gamma Ray, Clazy, any of the other tools, uh, come by, visit us at the virtual table and uh, thanks for listening. Thank you for the demo. Let's... All right. Thanks to me, Jan, from KDEP.